Right now you're probably wondering why we're still wearing the same clothes that we were wearing the past couple videos. It's because we're all doing them the same day. So in this video, we're going to be showing you how to make your character move. And um, this is the side to side movement. So eventually we'll have gravity and we'll also have the jump when you land on a platform. It'll have an auto jump. But right now we're just going to do the left to right strafing. But this video is going to be super fun because this is where we start coding and we're not going to be starting on the main menu in this video uh, which a lot of people think to do that because it's easy but we want to do something more fun rather than just easy and at the end of this video if you've been following along you should be able to semi play your game with controlling your character now we're going to show you how to code your character to move left and right we're also going to create code that will spawn our main character in the scene view. So in order to do this, we need to do a couple things in Unity before we get to the coding. The first will be to create an empty game object, which will stand as the placeholder for our script or our main game controller. So we'll go to game object, create empty, and we'll rename this by clicking on it and we'll call it game controller then we'll also need to create an empty game object for the location in which we want our character to spawn at the beginning of our game so we'll go game object create empty and we'll call this spawn location or position We will center our game controller to 0, 0, 0 in the scene view. And our spawn location we want to be near the bottom of our game. We'll say 0 for the x, negative 5 for the y. No, we'll make it 4.5. And z will be 0. Then we need to go to our scripts folder and create a new C sharp script. We'll call this game controller. And then we'll double click on it to open it in mono develop. Once it's opened, we can see that it's a public class. It created a public class game controller which is the name that we called it when we created the script. So if we had named it something else, it would have changed this here as well. And it inherits from mono behavior, which is the class in which Unity, it's a Unity specific class where we can call different functions that don't normally exist in C sharp. Then we have uh, void start function which is from mono behavior and the void update function I personally like using uh, the enable uh, on enabled enable function which is can be used in place of the start function they're just slightly different and we'll go in more in depth about the on enabled later in a future tutorial. Then we will need to create a couple variables. The first will be a public game object and we'll call this um, box dude prefab. The next will be a public game object and we'll call it box dude and then finally we'll create a public transform and call it spawn 
position. In our onEnable function, we will instantiate our box dude prefab and save it in the box dude game object variable at the position of our spawn point, our spawn position. So we'll say box dude equals instantiate and then box dude prefab and now we choose the location in which we want it to spawn so we'll say spawn position dot position and spawn position dot rotation and then we'll close the parentheses and we'll say as game object and then semicolon now we are going to create a new function so below our update function we will say void movement function and it will have no parameters we'll open up the body and inside our movement function we'll have two if statements one will be checking whether the A key is being pressed and the other if statement will be checking whether the D key is being pressed and so we'll start by saying if input dot get key parentheses key code dot A capital A and then close parentheses and then brackets we'll say yeah, box dude dot transform dot translate then we'll say vector2 dot write times 5f times time dot delta time close it and put an asterisk or a semicolon and before this we'll actually change the rotation of the sprite or the game object to be facing to the left so we'll say box dude dot transform dot Euler angles equals new vector two. And then the x will be 0, and the y component will be 180. And this will change it so he's facing to the left. Then semicolon. Now we'll create our second if statement. So below we'll say if input dot get key, parentheses get uh, key code dot capital D close parentheses open brackets and then uh, box dude dot transform dot you uh, Euler angles equals new vector to and we want both components to be 0, 0. Then we'll add one more line of code and this is to make it so he moves to the right. And it's actually going to be this same line of code. No different. And because we changed 
the position or the rotation of the character to be facing left, he will move left with this code. But because his position or his rotation is facing right in this code, he'll be moving right with that code. The last thing we will need to do before we save this script will be to call our movement function in the update function. So we will say movement function parentheses semicolon. Now we will save it, control S, and go to our Unity. One thing that I changed is that the spawn position needs to be less than the position of our background, so in the Z axis. So our background is set to zero, our spawn position needs to be set to negative something. So negative 0.5 will work. In our game controller, we will need to attach our script that we created. So we'll click and drag it onto our game controller. You can see in the inspector now that we have all the public variables that we created and they are not they are empty there's nothing in them and so we'll need to assign these variables so the first one is the box dude prefab so we'll go to our prefabs folder we'll click on our box dude and we'll drag him in to the box dude prefab now the box dude variable we will leave empty because our code will instantiate our box dude prefab into the scene view and save him in the box dude variable. Our spawn position we will take from our hierarchy and drag into this location. Now that we have these variables assigned it's time to test our code. So we'll go up to the top and hit the play button. You can see that our box dude has been instantiated and our box dude clone, because it creates a clone of the prefab, is saved in our variable. And he was spawned in the position of our spawn point. And you can see as we press the different keys, A and D, he'll move back and forth and he'll also change his rotation to be facing in the direction that he's moving. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. Make sure to you're following along and that you control your character also. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And anything you want to add? Just make sure you subscribe so that you can get updates on when we make new videos. Yeah. Catch you next time. Cowabunga. <laughs>